Do you want to have a successful career? Well, if so, there's four key setbacks that you need to avoid on your road to victory. So what's going on, guys? It's Josiah, your success strategist. And in today's video, I'm going to highlight the four most important things that you've got to avoid on the road to success. Now, a lot of people have big dreams in life. They got big goals. They got big aspirations. But you got to know how to be able to navigate through the potholes. You got to know how to avoid the dead ends. So this video is all about sharing with you the top four most detrimental career setbacks that will leave you in the dirt. Now, first one, you got to be able to know how to be able to bounce back. Okay. You got to know how to bounce back from a job loss. You got to know how to bounce back from a demotion. You got to know how to bounce back from just being fired, terminated, or being on some type of performance plan because you didn't cut it up to now, okay? So the first thing that you need to do as you're taking notes in today's video is subscribe because this is gonna be the only place that you're gonna get high quality information that's tailor-made for black men trying to thrive, okay? So let's write this down. First career setback, job loss maybe you get demoted from work maybe because of the fact that you have not been um, executing or performing based around company standards you get put on a performance plan now i know a lot of times you get hated on at the job because you got a certain skin like this but i'm going to give you the best technical advice that I can give as your success strategist on how to be able to maneuver through, okay? So one of the things that I want you to really have in mind when it comes to this type of setback is you always got to stay ready so that way you don't have to get ready. And what I mean by that is you need to always keep your resume current. Always keep your resume current. You know, one of the things that I give all of my clients that I'm going to give to you, especially in this video, is um, the Black Man's Guide to Career Advancement. This is all for free. I ain't trying to sell you nothing. I'm trying to be able to help you bounce back from the job loss opportunity that could be coming to you within a matter of days, months, years, etc. A lot of times we go through life and we find ourselves being put in a position where we lose a job. And that happens oftentimes at the worst possible moments in our lives because you got a lot of bills to pay, right? You got mouths to feed. You may have a family. You might have other um, aspirations that you wanted to be able to accomplish using the income that you were getting from this job. And one of the ways where a lot of brothers end up finding themselves on hard times is they don't actually prepare for a job loss or termination when it comes. So here's a couple of things that you need to have lined up for yourself. So like I said before, you need to have your resume current. And the easiest way to be able to do that is just to be able to get that black man's guide to career advancement because I literally show you in that how to be able to get a better paying job within the next 90 days. Now, a lot of folks that I've worked with I have multiple people that have been documented on record to walk into another opportunity and another position, sometimes at a new company, making $10,000 more than what they were making at their previous position. So I'm not just saying something and talking out the side of my neck when I'm telling you to get this file. This is going to be able to help you tremendously. Sometimes if you actually fall back in life, God is trying to springboard you into a better opportunity, but you gotta be prepared. You should not go any more than two to three months being unemployed. That's very important. You should not go two or three months being unemployed. You need to constantly have one working position always listed on that resume so that way you can always show that you're active, okay? So some of the best ways to be able to bounce back from a job loss is to have your resume current, is to have an emergency fund 
put in place before you ever get fired, okay? How do you prepare for a rainy day? By already having a raincoat in the house before the rainy day comes. A lot of times people scramble for this once the letter of termination actually reaches your office desk. But by then it's too late, why? Because the minute that you get terminated, you're gonna be in desperation mode. You're gonna just be trying to be able to find whatever job that you can find and you're going to end up, you're going to end up compromising uh, how much money you can make by actually seeking out a better position, knowing how to play the game properly to get back on your feet. It's a certain process that you have to go through when you're reapplying back into the job market. To be honest with you, in today's competitive world, it's best if you're applying to a different job every two to three years. This is not the same type of career-based environment uh, that your parents had or that your grandparents had where it's typical for an employee to stay at the exact same company for years on end. Like you got 20 years into the company, you got a pension that's being vested and you know you got all of these perks and you're climbing up the ladder in one corporation. In your day and age, if you're going to be successful, you're going to have to pursue other opportunities very actively. And guess what? There may come a point in time in your career where you experience a job loss, you experience a demotion, and you're put on a performance plan to be able to have better results. And that's the reason why I'm telling you, you need to plan for that now before it actually happens. If you only start dusting off the resume once you're fired, you're just gonna try to get any job that's being offered to you. By you having these things in place now with your emergency savings fund in place, three to six months, worth of expenses already saved up. So if you lose your job, you got a little bit of a financial cushion. Coupled with a brand new fresh resume, you're making sure that no matter what happens at the job that you're at, you're always ready to get back on the market. So that's the very first career setback that you really need to try to avoid. And of course, you wanna try to do as much as you can to avoid from getting fired. <laughs> right? You need to make sure that you're avoiding doing things that's going to get you put um, on the chopping block, making sure that you're obviously showing up to work, making sure that you're not just trying to meet expectations, but that you are actually trying to exceed expectations. I always say this in all of my videos. As a black man, you've got to come to the table 10 times stronger than anybody else. So your job is not to just be satisfactory. Your job is to be excellent. And you may be wondering, well, why you say that, Uzziah, if I'm going to work at a nine to five job and at the end of the day, I'm only going to get paid pennies on a dollar. Why should I have that approach? Shouldn't I focus primarily on being a business owner? Yes. But the thing that you got to understand is this. The way that you do one thing is the way that you do everything. Don't think that when it comes to a nine to five job, you're just gonna sit up and slouch and then you're ever gonna be able to start a business and you're just a totally different person. It's not like a light switch. The same fundamentals and the same habits that you are building at that nine to five job is the exact same work performance and work ethic and behavior that you're going to bring to your own company, right? It's a part of you. And so you need to go hard no matter what it is that you're doing. I'm gonna move on to the second point. The next thing that you need to focus on when it comes to avoiding a career setback is a lack of direction, okay? You need to think about where your career path is going to go from one year to the next. I've met a lot of brothers over the years that are very unclear about where they wanna be five years down the line, 10 years down the line, 15 years down the line. And the truth of the matter is you need a roadmap. You need to be able to see what your future is going to look like in advance. Because if you don't have the next five, 10, 15, 20 years of your life mapped out, you're gonna have no way of actually being able to look at your present moment 
and ask yourself the question, is my current job or my current position actually working towards my long-term goal? A lot of brothers just take the job because of the fact that the pay is good right now. And I'm not just talking about a regular nine to five job. I'm talking about you career oriented, college educated brothers as well. A lot of times, even like myself, I took a job directly out of college, primarily because of the pay. It wasn't because of the fact that I really thought deeply into where I wanted my life to be 20 years down the line. I really didn't know. There was only so much I knew as a young kid coming out of South Central LA. I didn't know what I wanted my life to look like. And I wish that someone would have told me up front, you need to think very deeply into what you want your life to look like as a much older man. Because if what you're doing now doesn't connect to who you want to be later, really you're wasting your time and you're selling yourself short. So the main thing that you got to do now is you got to focus on avoiding a lack of direction. I'm going to write that down, okay? Because a lot of times you'll get a job and the job that you're getting is just to satisfy your short-term interests, just to cover your rent today, your clothes today, your food, your gas, your transportation today. But what I'm trying to do for you as a black man that's on a path of success is I'm really trying to get you to think more about tomorrow than today. Today is important, but what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to cement an excellent future. And you cannot have an excellent future if you don't plan for tomorrow today. So before you go out and just get another dead-end job or another just random job, it might not even be dead-end, before you go and get another position where you don't even know why job A is connected to career path Z, you need to take some time to do some soul searching to really think about what is your ultimate career path and are you working in a position today to help you get to that point? Because if you're not, you need to get out of your current job and you need to focus on connecting the dots. Anything else is a waste of time. You might think that you're young and you can bounce from one spot to another spot and life isn't that serious and I get that, but I'm telling you, time catches up quick. I'm telling you, I know what it's like to have gone from teenager to 20s to 30s. Life catches up quick, okay? So that's the second thing that you need to avoid. The third thing, kind of couple with the second point, but a little bit different. You need to start knowing how to handle a change of pace, okay? So in the second point with the lack of direction, you just went out and just got a job to get a job. And for some of you, maybe you are in a career path that you thought is going to, was going to be the career path for you. That was going to really be your thing. But you got into the career path and you realize that's ultimately uh, not where you wanted to go. You know, I went through that uh, myself personally. I spent my entire life thinking that I was going to work for a computer company because I always love being on computers. My boys would always tell you, you want to know where to find me? You can find me in the house, surfing the web on a computer. That was just me. That's what I do. But I did not know all of the options that I should have really pursued as someone that loved being on computers. So in my narrow mind, I just thought I'm going to work for a computer company. So I graduated from college. I worked for the largest technology company in the world. And I had a good paying job. I was good at what I did. But the problem was I went to work every single day feeling unfulfilled, feeling marginalized, feeling depressed because there was all these gifts that God was given to me that was never going to see the light of the day working behind a cubicle in my previous position. So what I had to do is I had to start thinking about what I really wanted to do with my life. And what I really want to do with my life is what I'm doing today, helping young black men like yourself, emerging professionals, become as successful as possible. And so when it comes to you having that moment of clarity in your life that you want a change of pace, you need to start thinking about how you can dominate 
and a new opportunity. That's a lot. Uh, one of the biggest questions that I tend to get from a lot of my clients is, you know, Josiah, from the time that I've been working with you, I realized that my current job, it just really isn't what I want to do for the rest of my life, but I'm scared. I want to hop into a new industry, but maybe I don't have the same skills as somebody else. Maybe I don't have the same um, know-how. Maybe I don't have the same uh, background and expertise and experience as everyone else that I see in this position. What do I do? Well, the number one thing that I'm going to tell you to do is, honestly, you got to start jumping into it. There's never going to be a perfect moment for your life to have such a drastic change of pace, but you've got to be committed to learning the game. You've got to be committed to learning at a very accelerated, aggressive pace so that way you can catch up to people that have been in that industry longer than you and that way you can dominate. You've got the talent and you've got the capability to take that talent and turn it into skill, right? Talent is what you already have, but skill only comes through hours of really honing your craft. And what you gotta do is you gotta commit yourself to lifelong learning. If you can commit yourself to being a lifelong learner, then guess what? You can jump from one industry to the next as long as you're willing to learn how that industry is played. That's the reason why one of the things I would recommend for you to do is get a mentor. Find a mentor that has already dominated that industry that you can learn from. Read books from mentors in that industry. Even if it's not a personal relationship that you have, you can study these people. Study the top performing people in that industry and begin to pattern your efforts after theirs. Read their biographies. If they have training modules, you need to sign up for them. You need to embrace the change of pace. I know people right now personally that are working at dead end jobs and they're sticking themselves in that box of a dead end job all because of the fact that there is a fear of stepping into a new industry and learning all over again. Don't be afraid to start fresh, okay? So the number three thing that you need to really focus on avoiding is feeling stuck because of the fact that you know you need a change of pace, okay? You might be feeling stuck when it comes to actually um, switching from one career path to the next. You might be feeling like, well, you know what? Because I went to college for this, I shouldn't go out and get another job or another career path that's not associated with my college degree. Don't be that person. OK, I don't care if you went to college for one thing and you want to pick up a next. So what? I went to college for one career path and that was I.T. But when I got into the career path, what I had to realize is even though I may like technology and using the computer um, on a day to day, it doesn't mean that I want to use a computer working for somebody else. It doesn't mean that I want to use a computer to do like some menial task that I don't feel is actually helping the world. So what you've got to do when it comes to your change of paces, you've got to not just look at it as, oh, well, you know what? I'm just starting a whole new life and there's nothing I can take from my previous experience. Chances are there are certain things about your previous career that maybe you still want to hold on to, but you're going into a new career path because there's certain elements that you've had untapped in your own personal skill set that you now want to be able to uh, adopt into a new career. OK, so in other words, don't feel paralyzed. Don't feel like, you know, you, you're not able to jump into a new career path because you don't have a college degree in it because you don't have the experience. All you've got to do is be willing to give the effort, be willing to learn, be willing to learn how the game is played. And there's going to be an opportunity for you. I promise you of this. OK, I did it. And so the last and final thing that I want you to think about as it pertains to number three is number four, which is being stuck in your current position. OK, 
Now, why am I making this number four after I was speaking about it at length in number three? Well, when it comes to number three about the change of pace, what you're really thinking about is how to be able to properly dominate a new opportunity. When you're thinking about number four, it's really about how to get yourself unstuck. Now, getting unstuck in your current position does not necessarily mean that you get into a brand new industry. Maybe it's just about you getting a raise at your current job. Maybe it's just about you getting a promotion. You still want to be in your industry, but you want to know, okay, how do I actually get to the next rung on the ladder in this current company that I'm working? That may be you when it comes to number four. Again, like I said to you earlier, a lot of people are switching um, jobs every two years so that they will avoid being stuck in one position. You cannot stick yourself. This is one thing that I'm going to tell you, okay? If you make yourself stuck in one position as you climb throughout your career path, that means that you're going to put a ceiling over yourself financially. You're never going to be able to make more money because in a society where, you know, technology is always changing and the environment is always changing, if you stay in one job for too long, what that's going to tell your employer is that you are a low wage worker. What that's going to tell your employer is that because of the fact that you're not willing to grow and stretch and try new things, even if it's in the same industry working for the same company, because of the fact that you're not trying to seize new opportunities, you're going to become stale in the eyes of an employer. So again, you might be looking at your mom or your dad that's giving you advice and they might have worked at a company for 20 or 30 years working in that exact same position. What I'm telling you is that in today's economy, that is going to be a recipe for disaster. Why? Because this economic market is more competitive than ever, 7.4 billion people now on the planet. You got jobs that are being outsourced. And more important than that is 50% of all the jobs in America today are gonna to be gone within the next five years because they're gonna be automated by machines. So think about how many people at one point in time in their life spent their entire life working on one thing, one job, one function, only to have that one job replaced by a computer within two years time. And they became obsolete in the market because that was the only thing that they knew how to do. And no employer is looking for someone that knows how to push a button or play the role that they used to play. You've got to commit yourself to lifelong learning and making transitions, okay? Transition is the new stability in this new economy, okay? So those are the four primary things that you need to think about. And I talk more about this in the Black Man's Guide to Career Advancement. I've given you something for free that I would have otherwise charged in other circles because your success is that important to me. So in this document, I'm gonna be literally showing you how to be able to dust off the resume and properly reposition yourself for success. Again, when I've helped multiple people make five-figure raises and promotions at jobs and switching to new companies, they did not have to go back and get a college degree. They did not have to go back and get a certification. They did not have to do anything new in terms of learning a skill, but one thing that they did have to do was they had to learn how to remarket themselves. For a lot of you guys, you're not making the money that you want to make simply because of the fact that you don't know how to properly market yourself um, for a lot of these corporate positions, right? Even if you're working in a blue collar industry, you've got to know how to sell yourself. And that's what I show you how to do um, in that Black Man's Guide to Career Advancement. Not only do I show you how to be able to properly uh, get your resume 
and networking um, capabilities in place the way that you should, I show you how to be able to do it within the next 90 days. So maybe right now you're going through a job issue. Maybe right now you realize that you're working somewhere that you don't really want to be. And I'm going to show you how to be able to get a better job within 90 days tops. All right. So click below to make sure that you get that. If this is your first time watching or you haven't subscribed yet, please do so because I'm giving you videos like this every single day to help you succeed and thrive in this world where the odds are against you. I'm trying to look out for you as your brother, but I can only help you if you're willing to help yourself. Okay, so leave me a comment. Let me know what you thought about today's video. Make sure that you subscribe. Be your brother's keeper and tell others about Black Men's Career YouTube channel. And I'll see you guys on the next video. Take care.